Recently, U.S. had attacked Iran's three nuclear sites. A short time ago, the U.S. military carried out massive precision strikes on the three key nuclear facilities. Tonight, I can report to the world that the strikes were a spectacular military success. But the thing that made the most news was the planes and bombs that the U.S. had used. Several B-2 stealth bombers. B-2 spirit stealth bombers. The B-2 stealth bomber. The B-2 bombers totally obliterated the site, claimed Donald Trump. Firstly, there was this Northrop B-2 Spirit Bomber, which is one of the safest and most advanced aircraft in the world. And the US had made it only for its own military. It doesn't export it to other countries, including its own allies. Then there are the bombs that the US used, GPU-57 Bunker Busters, which are the most powerful and advanced bombs in this category, and the only ones in the world to go as deep as 200 feet and destroy a target underground. Now, why am I telling you this? Why am I talking about US and its defense capability? Well, it's because the US has a system in place that allows it to stay ahead of every other country in terms of its military. It's a system where the government organizations work in sync with the private players, where the government provides initial funding and resources and the private players innovate by competing with each other. And this allows the US to build weapons and technology which are crucial to its national security. It doesn't have to rely on imports from other countries for its core requirements. And well, this wasn't the case for India for a long time. For almost six decades, India was mostly reliant on other countries for the majority of its defense requirements. It was only in the last 10 years that India decided to take tangible steps to become self-reliant for its defense requirements. For example, we now have this thing called IDEX or Innovations for Defense Excellence, where startups are offered grants ranging from 1.5 crore rupees to 25 crore rupees to research and develop new technologies. And this has allowed an explosion of new defense startups in India. And in this video, we'll talk about five of such startups which are truly modernizing India's military. So let's jump right into it. And before we start, I want to say that we are now part of Zero One Network. The first startup in the list is from the drone sector, considered as the future of warfare. And this company is New Space Research and Technologies. Now, one of the exciting things about NRT is that it's founded by a former Indian Air Force officer, Samir Joshi. And the reason it's important is because Samir understands military requirements and operational challenges that occur during the procurement of such weapons. It also helps him establish networks within the defense organization, which can enable the company to secure defense contracts more easily. So what is it that NRT is building? Some of you would remember that in the recent Operation Sindur, the Indian Army deployed AI-driven swarm drones, which overwhelmed the Pakistani air defense and allowed India to attack precisely without being counter-attacked. Well, these drone swarms were mainly built by new space research and technologies. Their main focus is building next-generation autonomous aerospace systems. And the swarm drones that I just mentioned are just one of the products. One of their other notable drones is Abhimanyu, which the Indian Navy had announced a few months back that they are buying from NRT. Even our Air Force has shown interest in buying it. And the reason Abhimanyu is so much in demand is because, as the name suggests, it acts like a loyal wingman. It operates autonomously alongside India's manned aircrafts like MiG and Rafale. So basically, during a war, Abhimanyu can fly ahead of manned aircrafts, hence detecting threats and share real-time intelligence. And finally, the third major product NRT is building is HAPS, which is short for High Altitude Pseudo Satellites. Think of it like something between a drone and a satellite. These HAPS are placed around 20 kilometers above the Earth's surface, and they stay there for days and months and provide surveillance and gather intelligence. Also, they are solar powered, so there's no need for refueling or batteries. And in the last two decades, countries have put a lot of efforts and money into developing HAPs. In India, NRT is the first private company to successfully test a HAP for 24 hours in the atmosphere. And they are now working on increasing this to weeks and eventually months. Indian Navy has already inked a deal with this company for these HAPs to help them in naval surveillance. And one of the key reasons NRT is so successful today is because of the government grants like IDEX and DR RDO's TDF scheme. The company has won numerous grants from the government to research and develop their key technologies. The next startup I want to mention played a very key role in 2016 Uri Surgical Strikes. And if you had seen this movie, you would remember the night vision goggles and binoculars that the army had used to attack at night. Well, these equipments were made by this Bengaluru-based startup called Donbo Imaging. Their main focus is building night vision devices and thermal imaging solutions. And the story of Donbo Imaging is very interesting. The founder is Arvind Lakshmi Kumar, who by the way is also known as India's Iron Man for his passion for making breakthrough defense technologies. In his early days, Arvind 
Arvind worked with global defense organizations like DARPA, NASA, the US Army, and DRDO, where he learned about the future of combat. And in the early days of his company, Arvind had approached the Indian Army to sell their products. But the Army was skeptical because Tonbo was a small company with no track record. And so, what Tonbo did was they approached the US Army and sold them their products. And later, when the Indian Army did a joint exercise with the US Army, they were fascinated with these products and later got to know that they were made by an Indian company in Bengaluru. Now, coming back to what the company does. Tonbo means dragonfly in Japanese. And dragonflies are known for having compound eyes with multiple apertures that allows them to process vast amounts of visual data, see in low light and react quickly. Well, the team at Tonbo Imaging was to give this capability to Indian soldiers. Their products come in four different categories. The first one is thermal imagers and night vision system, where they make products like these double sensor night vision goggles that I just mentioned. Also, they have a complete Hawk Vision series of products which are used in surveillance and to improve visibility in darkness, smoke, rain and fog. The second category is weapon sites, where they have products like Cobra, Spartan and Sarisa, which can be mounted on assault rifles and launchers to improve visibility during combat. Then there are various missile systems, where Tonbo has products like these, which are considered as eyes and brains of missiles. And finally, Tonbo has various vehicle mounted and platform based systems like Photon DVE, which increases the visibility of armored vehicles like tanks, naval vessels and aircrafts. The next startup I want to talk about is Chennai-based Big Bang Boom Solutions. The company was started in 2018 by two serial entrepreneurs, Dr. Shivraman Ramaswamy and Praveen Dwarkanath. Both of these have decades of experience in deep tech including AI, nanotechnology and brain-computer interfaces. And they are using this experience to build made-in-India defense equipments. The company Big Bang Boom Solution was born when they won two IDX challenges in 2019 and 2020 for building see-through armor. And the money they won was 1.5 crore rupees each. And this money set the stage for the company. Today, their flagship product is Vajra Sentinel System, which is an anti-drone defense system. This is a full-fledged product to detect, track, identify, and neutralize enemy drones. They had won a 200 crore rupees contract from the defense ministry last year, and their products were used heavily in Operation Sindur. Another product for a similar application is this handheld anti-drone gun, which according to the army was very effective as well in Operation Sindur. Then there is a see-through armor. See, in a battlefield, tanks and infantry vehicles face a big challenge of seeing what's going around them as they only have these narrow slits to see through. And Big Bang Boom Solution has solved this issue by building Yudhik Shana, which is a 360 degree optic system. It has multiple cameras with advanced computer vision and augmented reality. And going ahead, the company is doing R&D in various important fields like material science, electronic warfare and green propulsion technology. In my opinion, Big Bang Boom Solution is one of the most successful outcomes from the government's IDX scheme, a company which started with a 1.5 crore rupees grant from the government. It then built a working product with this money, then met a few angel investors to raise more money, and then backed hundreds of crores of defense deals. I mean, something like this was unthinkable 10 years ago. Next up in the list, we have Kochi-based Iro, which was started by two ITNs, John St. Mathai from IIT Delhi and Kanappa Palanipan from IIT Madras. And the idea behind starting Iro was that India did not have a good solution for underwater inspection and surveillance. For example, if the Navy needed something to be done underwater, it was either done manually by human divers or we needed to import ROVs. And Kanappa actually did his master's in ocean engineering, which gave the team an edge. They started building these solutions in 2017 and in just one year, built India's first commercial underwater drone, Iro of Tuna. And the first order they got was from DRDO, and this brought the company into the limelight. Iro then raised seed funding from the Department of Science and Technology, DRDO, and Gale. So now, what are the key products of Iro? Well, the company's first product was this underwater drone called Iro of Tuna. It has two HD cameras in the front and back, and can be controlled by one person with a joystick control. It is used for inspecting dams, bridges, and ship hulls. But it could only go up to a depth of 100 meters. And so the company launched its stronger version Iro of Trot, which can go up to 300 meters underwater. This one also has a dual 4K camera and it also comes with a 10x optical zoom which gives better visual details. Next, the company also has a series of autonomous surface vehicles. For example, this iBoat Alpha, which is used for surface level surveys and monitoring. And finally, the company also provides various softwares for deeper study and analysis for underwater stuff. And their clients are most of the top government and private players in India. 
And finally, in the end, I want to mention Bengaluru-based Optimize Electrotech, which is working on a very important technology called Advanced Electro-Optic Surveillance Systems. The company was founded by Sandeep Shah and Kuldeep Kumar Saxena, both of whom had earlier worked with ISRO. Here is where both of these people understood the importance of multi-spectral imaging systems, which is basically using light to collect data. And they arrived at a common problem statement. India needs advanced indigenous surveillance systems capable of operating 24-7 in all weather conditions, especially for long range threat detection. At the time, India used to import these systems from countries like Israel and the US. And with this vision, the team started Optimize Electrotech in 2017. Their first breakthrough was in 2019 when they won an IDX grant of 1.5 crore rupees for their technology. And this was followed by Seed and Series A funding round by different VC funds. Today, their flagship product is a surveillance system called Noctvision, which is capable of 24-7 surveillance in all types of conditions, whether it's dark, foggy or raining. Also, this system is capable of face recognition recognition and detecting threats, for example, if a person is carrying a gun or not. Today, this product is used by the Indian Army, BSF, CRPF, CISF and even police forces in many states. In addition, Optimize Electrotech is also building these weapon sites which can be attached to existing weapons to increase their sight capabilities, allowing them to fight in difficult terrain and low light. And finally, they also make these handheld devices which people can use as a surveillance product in their homes and offices. Basically, the company is using multispectral imaging and AI to build all sorts of applications for defense forces, other government entities, and even the general public. So, this was a list of top 5 defense startups in India in 2025. And there was no strict parameter to select these startups. It was just how much impact they're having and how promising they are for the future. I'm sure there are many more small startups which are building even more important defense applications, but they are small and haven't made it to the news yet. But one thing is for sure, the next decade is going to be about India's defense startups. We will see our own version of Palantir and Enduril, which will be known not just in India, but all around the world. In the end, let me know what you think. Which of these startups did you like the most? And what's your biggest takeaway from this video? Write it in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.